Gregor says, I'm setting up a SharePoint environment for a diverse team, including external collaborators. It's crucial to maintain strict control over who has access to what. What's the most effective way to manage user permissions in SharePoint without overwhelming the admin team and while ensuring data security? This is a big one and probably one of the most common questions and challenges that people have when they're setting up a SharePoint environment is that they have, you know, security, everything's security trend. And so you can either see or not see things based on your permissions in whatever site you're in, and they could be different for each site. They are different at the site level. They can be different at a um, document library or list level. They can be, each one of those is, um, you can kind of peel away the onion and take away permissions and give different permissions in different places. So the biggest thing for that is not to manage it person by person because person by person makes it very difficult to maintain that. You need to decide your permission groups, like who are your audiences, who needs to see what, who needs to be able to have access to what or, or be able to edit something and other people can't edit, they can only see it. Determine who, who those audiences are and create groups around those. And yeah, people role, can be in multiple groups. Role-based permissions. Right, yeah. 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 You can have multiple roles there. Uh, yeah. Right. That's the it, it, and so then you're managing by um you know you have exceptions to that, but it's the you know rarely you can have as part of your governance process review who's asking for an exception or the creation of a new role type there. What is that? Um and and I, I think there's a uh, most of those requests should be rejected. People should work within that, but you need to make sure. Hey, is somebody asking for this? Are we getting multiple requests in? Well, we need to go modify this role because it's a more we're seeing this behavior more. Um, but yeah, you I'd rather manage four or five buckets of people than having to remember who did I give permissions to. Well, that's and then that's when good. you have to take them away, that's a nightmare. Right. And I think the bigger challenge is that the SharePoint sites that are tied to Microsoft Teams, those those permission groups don't match. And when you create, and instead of adding people to the members list, because there's always the default, the owners, the members, and the visitors in a SharePoint site. In a team site, you have the owners and the members, and those don't necessarily match. When you start looking at, you know, being able to create those permission groups, you can't create different permission groups and teams. You can only create them in um, the SharePoint site. And that's where I think the disconnect is. I wish Microsoft would mash those up a little bit better because they're really distinct and frustrating when you're trying to come up with your audiences. Everything everything should be matching to, to Entra. I mean, if you think about it, if everything's gonna be up in, in Azure, which 365 is, um, it should match, match up to Entra. And if you have a group in Entra, or you have a, you know, it should match up to a team, you know, or a group that's used in Teams and the same thing in SharePoint. I mean, it's just like an Active Directory. I mean, you use Active Directory on-prem, you rely on the groups in Active Directory or the, you know, the OUs uh, to, for RBAC control, for, you know, the, the granular control. So that doesn't, you know, that, that's kind of screwy of Microsoft not to follow that unless unless they're trying to like, you know, wedge an application into a place it wasn't before like they haven't done that before um yeah. you know and just it doesn't see sound if it'll, like microsoft yeah just to see yeah. if it would fit you know and then we'll try it over here and we'll try that and yeah. But, so. yeah but that's and and look and there was some of the disparity between those between you know entra and sharepoint and teams because this is this has been a, a topic a conversation for you know, the 20 years, 15, 17 years, whatever it is now that I've been involved with in, in this space, um, this has been a, a topic. In fact, a big part of when I, you know, my SharePoint admin days was, uh, you know, just doing permission management and constant cleanup because roles change, people move, organizational structures and everything around that constantly adjusting those cycles. Do you remember, when it, I, you remember yeah. when it used to be really hard to change the last name of a user? I remember oh. that as an admin because somebody would get married and we'd have to change their last name. And it was like a drawn out process. Yeah, <laughs> just that to goes get all the way done. back to exchange. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, there's, well, uh, you know, there were, there were vendor solutions. There's a vendor solution. They got acquired 
where they they went in and cleaned just that up. That's all that they did was they basically sat and their theirs was Mike your position. It was the uh, uh, the system of record for this should be Azure AD, uh, AD now Entra uh, ID. Uh, it should be there and it would go and reconcile it with the other applications, third party tools, you know, all the governance tools help manage the complexity, the mess of that is able to act as that, you know, that, that uh, uh, service bus in between them, communicating with the different tools and making that much easier. So then you can have, if a role changes, it can flag alert in the system, the admin goes in, makes the adjustment. But if you're trying to do this out of the box without those third-party tools, it can be messy. It's messy. And then ShareGate Net does a really good job of finding some of that stuff, in, in my experience. The other part of his question is, like, how do I keep from overwhelming the admin team? You need to train your site owners about the permissions, both on the, the team side and the SharePoint side, so that they know what they're doing and they understand they're not, you know, how not to make a mess of it. And I think that's another piece, you know, they, they've given people so much latitude with creating teams, which creates the SharePoint site behind the scenes and the M365 group and at the foundation of it. But people don't actually understand what they're doing. And, I, you know, they can make a big mess real fast. Well, the other half of his question, too, is external users. Oh, and managing yeah. that. That's always been a problem with SharePoint. Right. <laughs> Yeah. And that's the it depends answer, right? We don't even know how the whatever the administrator is set up on that side and yeah. what they allow. Well, that, that's why I, I again I go back. Sorry, this is like a lazy answer to this, but still I think the third party vendors have figured this part out and manage well, it much better than I mean you can you can assign a you can assign a guest in intra, intra, right? I mean you can have a guest account yeah. that's a you know comes from another domain. You can either trust that domain or not trust that domain. You still need to uh, take those steps. You still you need still to have them. to yeah, you still have to take those steps. But the, the 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 thing is is when you get down to the meat of it, okay, it's it's like Sherry was saying, your your folks have to understand how to manage it, you know, in where it, it gets its information, the, the source of truth. And if it's SharePoint, it gets it from one place and get source of truth. Teams gets it another place. And, yeah. you know, in order to even address external users, you're going to have to like get that straightened out first. <laughs> well, the, well, that's what I, that's my point is that, uh, uh, again, as it, to, to be able to go and do that, to do that. And you're just talking about SharePoint. And the, the danger is if they're in there in SharePoint, I mean, what else with those external guests? What else do they have access to? Where, where are they in the system? You have to be aware of who's in your system, what permissions do they have? What are they doing within that environment? You have to be able to monitor that for, you know, do it's, mm -hmm. it's part of your risk management of external people, of even opening that. That's why a lot of organizations, my past company, do not allow external guests, period. They just said it's too much of a headache. And so we're just not going to, we're going to lock it down, which I think that it's a huge mistake because people will just go around IT. They'll go use completely Shadow IT. third party tools. Hey, your, yeah. your, your IP is now on another tool that you have no control over. Let's use Zoom. Yeah. Well, it's, it's <laughs> and I've never up. understood the disconnect uh, between security groups in Active Directory now and then now intro and then the SharePoint groups are different than that. And, you know, that it should all go together. And I think they yeah. finally did tie together the act where you can use an active directory group or an intro. Is it an intro ID group? Sorry, forgive my ignorance on that. Yeah. But um, as a security group for um, SharePoint side, but you still can't use it for teams. Teams have to be added by person. Yeah, right. And that's, it, it, don't worry, Sherry, it's all one, right? AAD, AAD, AD, and tra, it's all the same thing. But, it, it, you know, you're exactly right. Um, you know, it. one thing talks this way, another thing talks this way. And, you know, you have to use a different ID just for Teams. And let's not forget the whole Microsoft ID versus the work and school account. Oh, gosh. Um, we, yeah, we've had that conversation <laughs> twice this week, yeah. haven't we, Kristen? Yep. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. So we got to have separate apps. The one we're talking on right now, I had to install a separate app just because it's, I have to use a work or school account compared to the one that Windows 11 now installs by default, mm -hmm. um, which I think the new version 
is not good. Um, but <laughs> you, you you're try so it. nice. I you're know. so nice, Mike. I know. <laughs> Wow, Mike, I label you a complainer. Wow. Well, uh, come on now. <laughs> Shame. Come on now. I, I, I complained about the new outlook, you know, yeah. but now I've kind of gotten over that a little bit. But teams, I don't know it's if I'll all, ever get over that. All good. I don't know if I'll ever get over teams. <laughs> <laughs> Look, as, I, again, it, if, seriously, if people are wondering, it, because it's getting out of hand, how do they manage that? And you've got your ad one or two admins that they're spending all their time chasing this and and still not keeping up, especially with external users. Like, I, I'm sorry to say this, like you need to go look at the third party tools because the the vendors go look at Rencor and and AbPoint and others. They've they got this figured out, Syskit, um, and elsewhere. So I'm just uh, amazed that third party providers have been able to figure out things that we've been asking for for 20 years to be built into yeah. these tools and the and and the team, you know, they can keep moving things around, but they can't give us the basic functionality like securing a list view would be lovely. Well, <laughs> then you have Microsoft that goes and adds other things like in the news is that that, that they're modifying, they're adding a bunch of out of the box and a purview around governance. And so, and, and how you're working with, and I work with, with Rencor, um, is that you've got customers that are saying, it was like, well, hold, uh, hold off now and looking at your solution. Microsoft says they're now doing governance things around this. I said, yeah, for Copilot, it's very specific features. It doesn't replace 95% of what the third party tools do. Um, so right. again, it, it, the stuff that's out of the box, it's not scalable, it's, it, it's hard to manage. Um, using the out of the box across the various admin centers with everything else that you need to do. You're talking about just SharePoint, you know, then you're still chasing activity logs, um, the permissions, watching what, you know, who these people are, what they're doing in the environment. Are you going to look at that every day or are you going to rely on, would you rather just get alerts if some other odd behavior occurs? Yeah. The, the, the exception. Yeah. For sure.